What's up guys, Tristan Nagro here with another video. Today I'm going to talk about UFC 245. I'm going to give my predictions on this Las Vegas card. So, super excited about this card. It is pretty damn stacked if you are a MMA junkie, you really like MMA, and you're probably going to be a big fan of this card. Not so much for a lot of people that are kind of in and out with UFC. They might not recognize a lot of the names on this card. There's three championship fights, that being Max Holloway versus Alexander Volkanovsky, Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington, and Jermaine Randami versus Amanda Nunes. Three really, really cool title fights that could go either way. And the betting odds are pretty close on all of these. I could see either of them going either way. Who knows what the hell's going to happen. Even the prelims have some good uh, fights on them. So I'm just going to get started right away. The first fight that caught my eye was Matt Brown versus Ben Saunders. Matt Brown has been out for a little while, but he's one of the more recognizable names in the prelims. He, uh, he's still like a notable fighter. He's fought a lot of different guys, a lot of high caliber fighters, and he's gotten a lot of wins. He's uh, recently appeared on the Joe Rog Rogan podcast. I recommend you go and watch that. He's had a very interesting past. Ben Saunders, I had never heard of. It sounded like recognizable. Maybe he was in like a UFC game that I played, but I just, I've never heard of this guy. And it shows because he's like coming off of his fifth loss. I don't know why they're giving him matt brown matt brown's like this violent very good fighter whereas this guy he's ben saunders he's been ko'd five times in his last seven fights i don't know if this if this is like a tune-up fight for matt brown to get him back into contention in the top 10 but it's, it's a weird fight and i just see him getting violently ko'd by matt brown i see this going first round since this guy in his last two fights got knocked out in both the first two first rounds they were both first round KOs, so definitely think Matt Brown will win this one via KO in the first round. The next fight is Mike Perry versus Jeff Neal. Jeff is on a five fight win streak. No one too notable of wins. He beat Belal uh, Muhammad, who's like relatively uh, more known, so that's a pretty big fight. He's very strong, he's got a decent amount of KOs. And Mike Perry, I am a big fan of. I thought he won against Vincente Luque, but he got edged out. Mike Perry is just always so fun to watch. This is going to be a firefight. They are going to be standing up, and I don't see this going to the ground at all unless Mike Perry switched his game up completely. I see this being a KO for either guy, but I want to see Mike Perry win, and I think if he plays his style where he's actually a bit more safe and calculated, I think he will win in the second round via either KO or TKO. Next up on the main card is Peter Yan versus Uriah Faber. This is a big, big jump for uh, Uriah Faber coming out of retirement. He won his last fight via KO. It was actually a pretty good fight. And a lot of people thought, thought the younger fighter was going to win, but Uriah Faber pulled it out. I do not think the same thing is going to happen in this fight. Peter Yan is a very, very good fighter. I think he's 13-1 or something. He beat Jimmy Rivera and John Dodson in his last two fights, which were both in 2019. So this is his third fight. Super fresh fighter. He's very good stand-up. He's very unorthodox. Not unorthodox, but he has a wide variety of, uh, of attacks. He's got a, he does a lot of different spinning stuff out of the clinch. He does a lot of spinning uh, back fists, a lot of spinning kicks. I just think he's going to be way too much for an old Uriah Faber. This dude's 26 years old, and I just don't see Faber being able to, to win it. He could try and wrestle, but Peter Jan's got really good uh, takedown defense, so... And in this light of uh, fighters, it's hard to keep people down for a long period of time, especially someone as light and fast and strong as Peter Yan. I don't see him coming out with a win. I think Yan is going to win uh, via decision, unanimous, after three rounds. Uriah Faber hasn't been knocked out, so I don't think he'll get knocked out. He's really good on the ground in terms of uh, his Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so he wouldn't get submitted. 
definitely see this going to the two decision, and I definitely think it'll go to Peter Young. Faber could pull it out, but I just I just don't see it happening. I think this is like the biggest uh, underdog on the on the card. I think who knows Faber could be a dog, and he might pull through, and maybe he's. Uh, just a new dude in 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 his new uh, coming fights. Who knows? We'll see. Next up is Josie Aldo versus Marlon Moraes. So now we get to the cards where uh, or the fights where it's very very close, and I have no idea. It's very hard picking decisions for these guys because they're all such good fighters and they're all so evenly matched. Josie is a bit more predictable, and. It's very undecided whether he's in fighting. He's talked about going back to soccer because he used to be a professional soccer player. He's going down to bantamweight, and I know he's already had a hard time cutting weight at 145. So now dropping down to 135 against a guy like Barlin Marais, who was super, super dangerous. I don't know. I, I This makes me think that Marlon is going to pull it through. I think he'll get it done via a third round KO. I think his kicks are going to be a little bit too much for Jose. He's going to pick him, pick Jose apart from the outside, which is kind of hard to hard to say considering Jose is actually can, uh, uh, the smaller fighter in this. I'm thinking that Marlon can pick him apart from the outside with kicks. Jose has that kind of predictable sort of passive stance. It's almost like Valentina Shevchenko's stance where he's he's more reactive and he's less uh, pressuring he'll, or he'll slowly pressure, but he's not one to just move around lots, kind of like a Dominic Cruz. He's not like that where Marlon will be cutting angles. He'll be moving around a lot and he can, I think he'll pick apart Jose Aldo. Which is kind of hard to say because Jose Aldo is the bigger fighter, not by too much, but I still think Marlon King will get it done that way. I really think that if Jose was playing the long game, he should have went with someone uh, lower on the rankings, not someone who's number one, I think he is right now. Tough, tough fight for Jose Aldo. I could see him getting it done, but I'm thinking uh, Marlon will, will have this. Next is Amanda Nunes versus Jermaine Deuteronomy. Another super interesting fight. I'm going to definitely be leaning towards Amanda Nunes. For one, I don't like Jermaine Deuteronomy. She, uh, she's weird. She hits, she hits people after the bell. And she definitely should have lost to Holly Holm, in my honest opinion. And MMA math isn't always correct, but when Amanda Nunes dominated Holly and Kato, Kyoder, it showed that Amanda Nunes was on a completely different level. If you think, like, in terms of my opinion, Holly beat Jermaine, and that was kind of a close fight, and then Amanda Nunes completely dominated Holly Holm, so I don't think it's going to go any other way. I think Amanda Nunes will be able to win. I'm predicting a third-round unanimous decision, but I can easily see Amanda Nunes pulling out a KO in any single one of these rounds. She is super dangerous. And not a third round decision. It'll be a fifth round decision because it's a fifth round, five round fight for that one. Next up is Max Holloway versus Alexander Volkanovsky. I think that people are overhyping Volkanovsky a little bit too much. And they're they're looking past Max a little bit too much. And they're not looking at the sheer stats of this fight because Max Holloway is a way bigger fighter. He is five inches taller, and Alexander Volkanovsky hasn't beaten too many notable fighters. He beat sort of a almost retired Chad Mendez, and then he looked okay against Jose Aldo. Whereas, and I know MMA math isn't always correct, but Max destroyed Jose Aldo in two fights back to back. So with the size advantage, I don't see how Alexander can get inside and, and uh, employ his game. I could see him going really hard on the low kicks and sort of uh, taking out Max, but it's, it's just too hard to see. I think Max is just way too good of a fighter. I would have liked to see Volkanovski against someone like Brian Ortega. Who knows what could happen with this fight. I think for fourth round TKO for Max will be uh, how it gets it done. And the last fight on this card is Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington. Boy, am I excited for this one. A lot of people are going to hate me 
for this. I kind of like Colby Covington, and that's just kind of kind of just because I'm a little bit of a shit disturber, and I kind of find it funny what he does. Whereas Kamaru Usman is kind of just this. He's not that clever with his words, and he's not that fun. He he's just he he seems really boring to me, and he's always super cheesy with his thirty percent shit. I know Colby's like super cheesy as well, and nothing he says isn't like completely like revolutionary but it's just super funny what he says and he actually sticks to like this sort of heel character and it's funny seeing people get so mad at him when they know it's just an act and he's just trying to to sell pay-per-view numbers and he's trying to make himself relevant and you know what it's working now on to the fight no matter who wins this, I don't see either guy getting finished. They both have super sick gas tanks. Neither has got. Neither of them have gotten KO'd in their uh, official MMA careers. Both uh, their wrestlings, both of their wrestling will get canceled out because they. I think they both just have too high level of wrestling to be able to get dominated by either fighter. But what it's going to come down to is who has the better striking. And in my honest opinion, I think that Colby is going to edge out Kamaru Usman in the in the striking category. I think that Kamaru relies a bit more on his wrestling and his and his striking is more to get inside to be able to wrestle. Whereas Colby Covington will go long periods of his fights just striking and he dominates a lot of his fight, fighters in the striking. Notably against uh, Damian Maya, uh, Robbie Lawler, Dong Hyun Kim. With the support of ATT, American Top Team, who are who's an amazing team, with with the uh, coach Mike Brown, I think they're going to be able to game plan out Kamaru Usman, and they should be able to come in with a game plan. Colby always comes in super conditioned. He's super scrambly. He's got good striking, crazy wrestling. I just think he'll get it done via fifth round unanimous decision. Anyways, I think a lot of you guys are going to hate my decisions on these. Uh, notably, the last one, Colby winning. But those are my decisions. Those are my opinions. Let me know what you think of my uh, predictions. What, let me know who you think is going to win each fight down in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever. And if you like my content, please uh, consider subscribing. Thanks, guys. Peace. Enjoy the fights.